Hey guys, this is Paul from Smart Easy DIY. Welcome to episode 10 of my garage build. So today I'm going to be installing the PEX tubing for radiant heat. I'm just making some reference lines here to see if it'll help me as I go along. So let's get started. In my case, what I'm doing is I'm stapling the PEX directly to the foam board. And then after that, I'm going to do rebar on top of that. That's what my concrete guy requested because he wants to score these and he wants to make sure to not hit the PEX. So that's kind of going to hopefully hold the PEX down low and we'll see how that works out. So I'm hopeful since the rebar is going to be separate of the PEX, they're going to be able to pull it up higher. They're going to pull it up when they pour. That should help out hopefully so it doesn't hit any of that. I was going to show you this as well. You're probably wondering what these holes are right here. I decided that I wanted to prep for future in case I'd ever want to put a car lift in here because I do work on cars quite a bit and I wanted to prep for that. Everything that I've seen, my brother's mechanic, he has a couple lifts, so he kind of told me what his spacing were on his. There's the older style and new style, and the older ones have a little bigger footprint, but I think this should still suffice. So I went two foot by two foot, and they do say that they're okay for four inch concrete slab, which he put his in after the fact, went before he knew that it was going to be that. And his is only four inch, but he did a really strong mix, which I'm going to do 4,000 or 4,500 PSI with fiberglass mesh plus the rebar. So I think it's going to be a really strong floor. All that to say is I did want to get it as thick as I could though. So I decided to eliminate the foam under there. So that'll make it six and a half inches thick of concrete right there. And I'm going to notate very carefully these measurements. So I know once the floor is done, if I ever in the future want to put this lift in, then I'm going to make sure I know exactly where this is. I might even refer back to this video. <laughs> so hopefully YouTube lives forever, right guys? So I'm going to avoid these areas with pecs as well. I'm going to give myself plenty of room because when I go to anchor these in here, I don't want to take any chance of hitting any tubing. So the one little place where I do have walls back here, I think I'm just going to do like I did in my house. I think I'm just going to glue them down because they're not going to be load bearing or anything, these walls. So I think I'm just going to put them in really tight, top plate, bottom plate. So I think I'm not going to worry about avoiding tubing under there. So I don't have to worry about anchoring down into the tubing. So that's my plan. I'm getting ready to start my radiant heat tubing in the floor, the PEX tubing. So I wanted to show you this PEX tubing and cooler that I made. I actually have a video on this already. If you want, I'll include a link right down here and I'll try to link it up top as well. I made it a couple years ago, but this is a little bit revised version. It's actually kind of a simplified version. On that one, I had a little barrel to put in the middle. This one I don't, but I just put two by fours in like this, screwed them from the bottom up and then just put this in. And I'm using only 2000 foot rolls. So it's really easy. I just put a screw on top of that, just pop two screws, put the new roll on, put those screws back in and it works good. So I wanted to show you really quick. I just use a scrap of ply, but I cut it round just so it doesn't hit on anything but I'll just tip this up here. I just made kind of a temporary support out of two by fours and then I used a lazy Susan hardware under there so that it rotates nicely. And you'll see how it works in the video. It works really well. It just spins around like that as you're pulling it because there's a couple hundred dollars if you want to buy one of these actual PEX tubing uncoilers. This one is about 10 bucks for the hardware, some scraps of lumber, that's it. So it's really easy to make, really simple. Like I said, check out that video if you're interested. That's more in depth about it. This just gives you kind of an idea of how I did it, but this can give you an idea like the updated version to simplify the top if you don't have a barrel or a plastic bucket for it to go around. And this keeps it kind of from getting too unruly as well. So I wanted to show that really quick because it makes it so nice for uncoiling, no kinks. So I wanted to show you this PEX foam board slaper from Malco Tools. I'll include a link down in the video description below the video where you can find it if you want. They're a couple hundred dollars, but if you're doing a job or two, I think they're worthwhile savings. If you're doing it this way anyway, where you're doing it onto the foam board right straight up instead of zip tying it to wire mesh or something like that. On the house, what I did is I had the wire remesh and I was able to zip tie it to that, but this is so fast. I really like it. So they sent this one out for me to try out and I'm really happy with it overall so far. High speed foam board stapler. You can get inch and a half staples or you can get two and a half staples, which I did the two and a half because of how thick my foam is. And that's two and a half overall. So when it sits on top of the PEX tubing, it's not going to go into your foam board at two and a half. But my foam board is already two and a half, so I don't have any worries of it sticking through. So you can see there, that's what the staples look like. They have double barbs, so they hold really well and tight. So what it does, it has this kickstand here when you're not using it. It's kind of handy. It just slides up and down. It has a weight here to hold the staples on. So you slide that weight off. You can put these on here, just slip them on here, and they say minimum fill level, like you want to fill it up to here minimum. I think it's just so it feeds properly, so it has some weight on it. 
Some people have talked about putting extra weight on to push the staples down so they feed better. One thing I found very first thing, I put the first staple in, the second one jammed, second and third actually they jammed together. But I found out one thing was I put WD-40 in here and inside here. I worked it really good with WD-40 and I think it was just because it was brand new. It hadn't been lubed up yet at all. And now it's been feeding great. I haven't had any issues with just using the factory weight. So I've used it a little bit now and I'll show you more as I go along, but it's working really well. Right now I'm putting staples about every two feet I'll have to see if that's enough. Right here I just did an extra big to test it out and I think I'm going to have to do every two feet. I did it a little closer to go around stuff like when you're making bends. But for now I'm just going to see how many staples I use. I bought extra in case I need it. But yeah I just kind of want to show you the process of using this thing and talk about it a little bit. Yeah if you're going to be doing your own like this I think it saves a lot of time. So as I'm going along here this outside run I'm trying to stay as close to the outside edge as I can just because I can't get any closer than that. And then I'm coming back really close to that for that first loop, just to keep the heat as close to the outside edge. So from then on, then I'm spacing it a normal 12 inches. This is the PEX tubing that I'm using. It is PEX A. It's a better grade than just the normal stuff that you get. And make sure that you use oxygen barrier tubing that's made specifically for radiant heat if you're planning to do this in your slab as well. So that is very important. I am using half inch and doing 12 inch spacing. Some people do a bigger diameter pipe and go a little bigger with their spacing. So you have to calculate out how you want to do that. Also what I'm going over in this footage right here is when I first started, it started out at zero and all these rolls have numbers every so many feet, maybe every six or eight feet. And then that way you can keep track of how long it runs that you're doing. So as you're doing your loops, you want to check your footage and see and make sure if you have the distance to get back to home from wherever you're going. Like if you're doing another loop, check it before you get too far and make sure you can get back. I recommend not going more than 300, sometimes up to 400, but shoot for kind of around that 300 or low 300 footage on your loop. So I did want to talk about this part as well when I'm feeding this first one in. I like to leave at least six feet. It depends on your location. You could leave eight feet. You don't want to splice them when you go to put them in your manifold, if at all possible. So make sure you leave yourself plenty of room. But I figured in my situation where I'm going to be, six feet is going to be sufficient. So that's what I did when I came through, fed it six feet past, and then that's when I started right there. These things are labeled when you do a loop, and when I got done with this one, you now the number was here. It's 670. So I went 330 on that run, which is about perfect. Three. 350. You can go up to four, like I said, if you have to make it back, if you're just at a spot where you can't do a run. But 330, that's just about perfect, I think, for that run. If you want, you can label this. Like, I'll probably label this one. And however you want to label it, I want the one that goes to the outside of the building. I want that to be the hottest water. I got to label it in a way that I know what it is. So whatever makes sense to you. So like feed and return, that would be probably a good way. So this would be one feed and this would be one return. So that would be like one complete loop. So I'll probably write that on here as I go and maybe tape off these ends. Although I want to be careful with these ends because I'm going to plug them right away and pressurize this system. That's another thing I'll talk about a little bit later. So now to get my next run in, I'll just show you. So these are one inch. I think I talked about it. They're one inch 90s. One inch gives you enough room to get this half inch pex in with ease. So you just slide it in, pull it through. And then once you got one here, pretty much just match the ends up and then you know that you got the same amount lengthwise. So that's one way to get it pretty close. Then you can just staple it so that way it stays and then you can continue on with your run. I'll probably still do this as number two feed because I'm close to the outside edge. So that's how I'm going to do it, except when it gets over to that side, I'll probably switch to whatever's on the outside there. So that run ended up pretty much being exactly 300 feet. So now that I'm on the last run of the roll, the one word of caution that I have is I need to kind of determine when I get close to the end if I have enough to make it home. That's not going to be on this run, that's going to be on the next run. I've been able to do two loops per run with this, and I'm just doing approximately 12 inches, you don't have to get it exact. I'm experimenting with setting that PEX uncoiler in the middle because I was kind of fighting it over here. On the one way it was left-handed and then it was right-handed coming back. So it's a little trial and error as to where to set up your uncoiler so that it's a smooth process. And as you move around, you might have to move this around too. Now that I'm down here, I wanted to see before I fasten this loop because I could just stop the loop there and go back if I had to. It says I have 78 feet. I have 80 right here. Sometimes the print isn't the greatest, so you have to reference back or forward to make sure. But I should have plenty to go back there. So for setting up the pressure test system for my radiance before I pour, 
it's a good idea to do this a couple days ahead of the pour at least. I'm going to probably end up getting it like a week ahead just because of the time frame I have. But I want to get this together and get it working. So I just got this simple test gauge. This was at Home Depot or Lowe's, I think. But this is the only size they have. I think it was a quarter inch national pipe thread. So then I think all I could find was this half inch T that's national pipe thread. So I had to get a reducer. So I had to put Teflon tape on there to seal it off really good because you don't want any leaks. I had to go from this to PEX. On this side, I had to go to this shutoff valve. I could have gone to PEX as well, done a similar thing to go to that. But I think in order to get this air chuck to work, this is what I had to do here. But this is kind of nice because then you can have your hose hooked up here without having any air going in. Then you can just crack this open. While the air is flowing in there, you can get it exact. Just shut it off right when it's wherever you want. It's not necessary that you charge every single line. You could put 12 of these on here. Like in my case, I have six loops. But I just got these plugs right here. So I'm going to put those in every other side of the loop. So say one side goes on here, the other side gets plugged, and that'll complete the loop. So that's what I'm going to do all the way down. And I have the crimp style. There's, I know there's different kinds. I have the crimp style from one I did before, so I just stuck with that. So I had to get some half-inch copper crimp rings to go with the crimping tool. So that's what I'm going to use on mine because I have a lot of these parts already. So that's what I'm going to use. So yeah, to show you a little bit of the process of what I'm going to do, I'm not going to make you watch this whole thing. But I'm going to pick number one right here. And I'm simply going to slip this crimp ring on here. With the plugs, you can actually put it on after. When you crimp these, if you've never crimped pecs before, you want to kind of stay, you know, see you got some, they're not threads, but they're ribs there that you can go on. I like to stay within like an eighth inch of the end, just because that gives a lot of good meat. And then get my crimping tool on there. And sometimes they slip a little when you are getting started. But you simply just clamp that together. It crimps it like that. So I can do every other one. So I can skip one and then I can plug this one. So yeah, now that I went through and got number one, number three, like I went through and alternated every other one. So that way I can hook these on to the other side of that loop. That's the first one. Then this one is the other side of his loop. You have to put the crimp rings on first on these ones because there's no way to get them on otherwise. So I'm going to hook on to that first one there. It's basically everything that's left, but I like to do them in order. The beauty of these crimp ones, which maybe the others are that way too, but if you make a mistake, there's a tool that you can cut these crimp rings back off with and redo it. Like, if you mess up, it's not hard to fix it. That's the beauty of PEX just in general. Alright, so there's that. Got those all hooked up. Then what I can do is tape these all together. Hopefully I can get them to stay there somehow. I might have to put some kind of temporary support, keep them up out of the concrete. I can kind of put these together, keep them out of the concrete guy's ways, and figure that out next. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this video. So the next video coming up in the series is getting rebar put in. Down in here in the footer trench and also across the whole floor. So I'll go through that process in the next video. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going to try to get these videos put out a little more closer together. It's just a really busy time of year for me, so it's kind of hard to find time to edit footage and all that stuff too sometimes. So if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it, and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys.